Hey guys and welcome back. Today we're actually going to be building another Mandalorian project, but this time instead of doing something offensive like I've done in the past with the uh, the flamethrower, the Mandalorian whistling birds, and the viber knife, I'm actually going to be doing something defensive. So today I'm actually building the Mandalorian Beskar chest plate. But this isn't going to be a cosplay prop, it's not going to be made out of foam, it's going to be made out of metal. Even on top of that, it's going to be bulletproof. So this isn't going to be just another cosplay project, this is the real deal. Okay, so before I can actually get started building this project, we have to know a little bit more about it. So let's talk about the concept behind this project. Now you only have to do a very minimal amount of research to know, and that's just by watching the show, to know that uh, the Mandalorian's armor is considered special or unique. And that all comes down to what it's made out of, and it's made out of Beskar. So what's so special about Beskar? Well, I found this quote on fandom to learn a little bit more about it, and it basically says that Beskar is a highly durable metal, which could repel blaster fire and lightsaber strikes. So what this essentially means is that this armor is 100% effective against the weapon of the time or of this Star Wars universe. So that's really the basis behind Beskar. Now obviously in our modern times, we don't have blasters or lightsabers. So we're gonna make an armor that defends against the actual weapon of our modern times, which is guns or rifles. So the goal for this project is to make a movie replica looking armor that actually is 100% bulletproof. So the idea that I came up with is what I consider a metal shell concept. So all I was gonna do was take pieces of AR-500 steel and encase them in sheet metal. That sheet metal could then be welded to the other pieces of sheet metal, creating this layered armor effect. All right, so now I can actually get into how I built this armor. So the first thing that I did, like I do for all projects, is I wanna get a good visual idea of how this armor is supposed to look before I even start to think about how I'm gonna put it together. So I went online and I found a bunch of reference pictures to, to get a feel for it from a lot of different angles. And then once I had a good idea, I actually found a picture, which was kind of difficult to do, um, of just a front facing picture only, you know, flat front picture. So then all I did was I took that front facing picture, I pulled it over into the CAD software, and then to make it to scale, I took a measurement on myself uh, from shoulder to shoulder and compared it to the picture so I could just drag it out, make sure it was to scale. And then all I did was sketch the outer edges of all the major components on the armor. So that's pretty much how I came up with a two scale template for the project. Then it was just a matter of printing it out. So then I had a paper copy template of all the different pieces that I could actually trace onto the metal itself. All right guys, so today I'm finally getting started on building this Mandalorian bulletproof chest plate. So just to give you a little rundown of what I'm gonna be doing, it's gonna be pretty simple. All I'm really gonna be doing is using that paper template to mark and cut all the metal pieces. And like I said before, we're gonna be using AR-500 steel plate, these guys, to make the, the actual bulletproof core and to hold those pieces together, we're gonna to be using 16 gauge regular sheet metal. So all I'm gonna be doing is cutting all those pieces out and then once I have all those pieces, it's just gonna be a matter of welding all of it together. All right, so I'm back in the shop this morning. Yesterday, I finished cutting all those AR-500 steel pieces out. It actually took like five hours just using the cutting wheel to get through all those pieces, which took a lot longer than I expected. So today I'm hoping to get through cutting all of the sheet metal parts out and hopefully get to the welding. And if all goes well, I might even get to paint by the end of the day. All right, so I finally got all the main pieces cut out. So just to show you here. 
So this is one of the, the main chest pieces. And just to give you an idea of what the shell is supposed to look like, we've got in the center, we've got the AR500 core, and then two pieces of 16 gauge sheet metal on the outsides. So then all you need to do now is cut out pieces for the edge. So we're gonna put another piece of sheet metal around the entire perimeter of this piece, and then tack and, and weld all of these individual sections together. And once I have all the individual sections welded together, we can then weld those pieces together to create the full chest plate armor. All right, so goal for today. I've got all the major pieces cut out, so all I have left to do is do a little bit of finish work on each one of those pieces. Otherwise, I'd say we're like 90% of the way done. Uh, once I have all those major pieces kind of like finished and make them look pretty nice, not too nice because this is just gonna be a really shiny target at the end of the day and I'm gonna be shooting it, so why fret over the specific details, you know? Anyways, I'm gonna get each one of these major pieces finished up looking as good as it can and then all I have to do is weld all those pieces together and then the front plate will be done. So after that, all I have to do is add some sort of shoulder strap to the, the whole setup and then probably some kind of back plate, maybe one of these extra bulletproof plates that I have but not anything fancy, just to counterweight the front one so it doesn't fall off. And then we're pretty much done and it'll be time to actually test this thing out. So let's get to it. So I gotta say it's kind of sad to be at this point where I have this nice looking Mandalorian armor but now I actually have to go out and try to destroy it because I spent a lot of time on it and I, I really did a lot to try to make it look like the armor from the Mandalorian. But you can't really call anything bulletproof unless you actually test it against real bullets. So we're going to be taking this thing out to the firing range and going to throw absolutely everything that I have at it. And I'm not going to stop at 9mm or 45 caliber like a lot of other tests do. A lot of times you'll see people do that. They'll, they'll shoot pistol rounds at something and call it bulletproof. And sure, it's bulletproof against handgun rounds, but when you actually shoot something like a rifle at it, uh, more than likely a lot of those tests that people just do the nine and the 45 will probably fail and they don't want you to see that. So they only stop at what they know the armor will be able to handle. For this test though, I'm gonna hold absolutely nothing back. I'm gonna shoot every round that I have access to at this armor to see if I can break it. This is going to be a true test to see if this armor really is bulletproof. I'm going to go everything from a 22 all the way up to I think the biggest that I, I can get my hands on is probably a 308. So we're going to see if this armor really can withstand all of these different rounds. So how the testing is going to work is I'm going to take the armor and have it completely fixed at a location at the end of the range. And then I'm going to go from the smallest bullet all the way up to the largest one and test it against each one sequentially. And we'll see how far it gets before the armor breaks or has a critical failure. As far as what we're looking for, uh, for the armor, the main thing is penetration, is do any of these bullets actually get all the way through the armor and hit what's behind it? And then also we're looking at durability and functionality. So we'll actually go out to the range and do the testing. So see you guys out there.
All right, so we've made Mandalorian's bulletproof chest plate, but you can't really call armor bulletproof unless you actually test it with real bullets. So today we've got the Mandalorian chest plate out here on the range, and we're actually gonna run it through a round of a bunch of different calibers of bullets. So we're gonna start off with 22 and then go all the way up into the high caliber rounds and just see how bulletproof this thing really is. Okay, even though I'm crazy enough to shoot this armor at close range, I am still gonna be as safe as possible while doing it. So I've got hearing protection here. I'm actually wearing body armor with a AR-500 plate inside. So I will be protecting my main vital organs. And we also have this ready-made uh, platform here so that I can shoot in between this crack between these two boards but if any small pieces come back between the armor and the plywood we should catch most of it all right let's see where we hit okay so we're looking at the damage from the 22 and at first glance you're like where did it go you can't even see anything on the plate but if you look close Right in between these two crack, this crack right here, right in between these two pieces. If you look really close, right here, it actually made a dent right in between these two plates. All right, so here we got the nine millimeter test. You can see that we hit right just about the middle on the bottom section. So since we got this 16 gauge shell, seems like we made a pretty big dent, but that's just a 16 metal or 16 gauge sheet metal being dented in. But as you can see, we got no penetration through the armor. So on to the next round. All right, so with the, the 45 millimeter test, don't mind my incredibly bad aim. I promise I'm a better shooter than this. But we hit it low in the bottom right. And just like the nine millimeter, we didn't get any penetration. We just got a nice uh, indentation in the top piece because of that 16 gauge sheet metal. So we're still doing good. On to the next one. All right, well, if anything, we're learning about my handgun grouping very low to the left anyways right here in the middle that's the 357 that's where we made the impact just like the other ones so far we still have no penetration through the AR 500 we just made another indentation which is again that 16 gauge sheet metal which i knew was going to be a drawback from the beginning but it's really not causing any major damage to to the armor so i think that's all all of our handgun rounds so it's time to move on to rifle rounds Okay, we're coming up on the first 5.56 full metal jacket test. So you can see we hit very top right. That's just a sighting issue with my rifle, but we did hit, let's see if we went through. Okay, so we can see we got a huge dimple on the sheet metal. So we went right through that sheet metal, no problem. Totally ripped it off up here on the top. And on the sides, blew that piece. I don't even know where that piece is. But did it go through? You can make a little, make out a little dimple mark on the F500 itself. Actually, no. That's as actually just a piece of sheet metal that's sitting there. On the back, no penetration all the way through. So there we go. First, for, first five, five, six round, full metal jacket. Did not go through. Although this sheet metal piece might have cut your throat, so that's not exactly ideal. On this last one, this one was actually supposed to be light armor piercing. Uh, it did exactly the same thing. It peeled up the 16 gauge sheet metal on the top of the side, a little bit on the front, and it left a big hole and it made a little tiny dimple mark on the AR-500, but it did not go through.
Okay, so we did two in a row right here just to get it going a little quicker, but this last one which did the most damage was the 270. The 270 shot hit right here. Now, it didn't go through. It did a lot of damage, but it didn't go through. And the only damage is the 16 gauge sheet metal because the actual air pipe hundred steel, it just dimpled it a little bit. But as far as penetration goes, nothing has gotten through the armor yet. inspection the AR500 plate did withstand the 308 shot however the uh, 16 gauge shell did not so we've got a giant hole in the 16 gauge sheet metal the shock and impact peel this layer away allowing this AR500 piece to fall out the good news there's no hole on the other side so our guy is still alive although he's probably unconscious. So, I think I think we've uh, proved our point here all the way up to 308. For the most part, our armor has stood up. All right, so we're back here at the studio and we're just gonna talk a little bit about what happened out there at the shooting range and just do kind of an after action review of the armor and how it did. So here I got the armor. Obviously, it's a lot more beat up than it was when we took it out to the range. So right off the bat, um, the penetration. We actually did not have a single round that was able to go all the way through the armor. Now there was a point there when some of the AR-500 pieces were no longer part of the armor, and if it had taken some follow-up shots after that, uh, then yeah, you'd be in danger. But as far as each round individually, none of these rounds would have been able to get through this armor at all. The AR-500 pieces themselves were not even close to being punctured by any of the rounds. The main fault was not with the AR-500, it was with the outer casing, which is what we're gonna talk about in the durability. Obviously, this is where we had the most problem. Biggest issue that we had with the durability of this armor was that sheet metal shell. We got pieces of 16 gauge sheet metal peeled up all over the place. So we've got the sides, especially on the pectoral or the top area, we have a lot of these pieces coming off. And then especially where that 308 round hit, that whole piece over here came off. Now the reason that the sheet metal shell failed is probably two different reasons. One, it might have been the welding. Uh, I did not have the best welder when it came to actually welding this together. And two, I'm not saying I'm the best or most experienced welder in the world. It's very likely that it was just a fault in my own welding putting this together that caused the failure. The second thing obviously is that the 16 gauge sheet metal might not have been thick enough or strong enough to with withstand the, the shock and the impact of the AR-500 inside the shell. That leads me into what would I change? So if I went back, obviously I would address the issues that we had here and that was mostly the sheet metal and the welding. So if I were to do this again, I might try to keep it light by using 16 gauge sheet metal in some places or most of the places, but I would probably try to reinforce the edges a lot more with uh, maybe thicker welds, leaving more weld on the metal and that would allow it to hold together much better. So as long as these AR-500 pieces are held in place, this armor will be bulletproof. The cool thing about this is this is a, a type of system, a way of holding this AR-500 in place that I might use in the future for other bulletproof armor projects. So if anything, I learned some pretty cool things here today and looking forward to implementing these changes in the future. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this project. So as always, if you have any cool ideas, uh, feel free to leave a comment below or shoot me a message on Instagram. I'm always really interested to hear the ideas that you guys have and I'm always wanting to build things that you guys actually want to see. So this armor was actually something that I know that you guys wanted to see. So I'm always listening to your ideas. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, consider subscribing. It doesn't cost you guys anything, but it really helps me grow the channel, which will allow me to build more complex, uh, more expensive, and just overall more awesome projects for you guys. All right, guys, that's about it. So we'll see you guys in the next video.